Have you ever met a person in life that you thought might be an angel? And I'm not just talking about your child or a friend of yours or someone that you think is an angelic because of the way that they carry themselves, but someone who just popped into your life. Uh, you were stuck somewhere and they helped you or someone that, that showed up somewhere in public and said something to you that you needed to hear in those moments or someone that was sick or ill or a recipient of charity and you thought, this person can't be a human being and then they're mysterious. You don't see them before, you don't see them after and you're left to think, wait a minute, was that an angel, right? I mean, it is possible that you might meet a shaitan, you know, in the form of a human being, but like, have I ever actually met an angel in the form of a human being? There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he talks about these three men from Bani Israel, and they were contemporaries, as is made clear in the hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ said there was a bald man, a man who was a leper, and a man who was blind. And an angel went to all three of them and asked them, what is it that you want? What is it that you'd want to change about yourself? And the leper said that I would want to have good skin because the people feel an aversion towards me because of my leprosy. And the angel touches that person and suddenly their skin is cured altogether. So they have full skin again. And the angel said to that person, and what type of property is most beloved to you? And the man says, camels. And so the angel then brings a pregnant she-camel and says, Barakallahu laka fiha, may Allah bless you with that she-camel. And this shows that it's Allah that's going to provide, not the angel. Allah is the one who blesses. And it's also a wisdom in that this person is now going to see this valley of camels come from this one pregnant she-camel to really see the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unfold before their eyes. And so suddenly that person has the skin that they want, the appearance that they want, and they also have the wealth that they want and become a very wealthy person. The angel then goes to someone who is bald and says, what would you like to change about yourself? And the bald man says that I'd love to have good hair, right? I feel like it would beautify me. I feel like it's what, what's missing in my life. And so the angel touches that man's head gives them an angelic hair transplant. You can't find that anywhere in the world today. And suddenly that person has a full head of hair and the angel then says to the man, and what, what type of property is most beloved to you? And the man says, cows. So the same thing happens. A pregnant cow is given and the angel says, Barakallahu laka fiha, may Allah bless you with it. And suddenly he has an entire uh, you know, plot of, of cows. And then he goes to a person who is blind. And we know that that is a very specific type of test. There are multiple rewards that you find in the hadith for the person that is blind and patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many scholars who suffered from this. And says to the blind man, what would you like? He said, I'd love to have my eyesight back, my vision back. And so the angel wipes his eyes and suddenly he can see again. And then he says to him, and what's the most beloved of property to you? He says, sheep, which is very simple, right? If you think about it. So he's given a pregnant sheep and that gives birth to uh, an, an entire uh, plot of sheep. And so he's got his entire uh, property in front of him that he can work with and that he can deal with. And so each one has their herd now and they have their property and they have the appearance that they want and they have the blessings that they want. The Prophet ﷺ says that then the angel comes back to each one of those people in the same human form as they were before. So to the leper, the angel shows up with leprosy, a human being with leprosy that's also poor. To the one who was bald, the angel shows up looking like the person used to look also poor. And for the one who was blind, the angel also shows up in the uh, form of a blind man that's also needy. And as that angel shows up to each one of them, the angel asks them for support. The leper and the bald man deny that they used to be poor and they say that, you know, that I earned this and they basically shoo the man away. And the angel responds in the form of that man and says, aren't you the person that used to be such and such? Weren't you once in need? And that person denies that they were ever poor in the first place. And so the arrogance has overtaken them 
and they've forgotten the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angel says back to them, if you are lying, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return you to what you were before. If you're lying about who you are, and if you are not just denying the blessing that Allah has given you, but not even acknowledging that you once didn't have these things, may Allah return you to what you were. But the blind man passed the test. The Prophet ﷺ said the blind man, as soon as he saw that person in his own form that he used to be, he says to the man, who is of course an angel, go ahead and take from this property whatever you want, for I was once like you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for me. So it's all yours, whatever you want, go ahead and take it. And subhanAllah, the scholars say, this is the one out of the three that actually had the most severe predicament, right? But look at his humility and he says, just go ahead and take it all. I used to be like you without even being asked. I used to be like you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for me. So therefore I'm providing for you whatever you want from this, because this is all the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angel responds and says, keep your property with you. Keep your property with you because verily Allah is pleased with you and angry with your two companions. And so the two companions lost everything that they had and were restored back to their position with the dua of the angel. And that person was able not just to keep the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life, but also increased in their station in the hereafter. Now back to us, the question is then, when I see someone that's in need, am I actually encountering an angel? And, and I have to be honest, Mahala, I remember a few times that I was in a refugee camp and I, th I thought to myself, this, this can't be a human being that's in front of me. And Allah knows best, right? The, re the reality is you're never actually going to know, right? If you've encountered an angel, that person is not going to reveal themselves and say, I, I'm actually an angel. But it would defeat the purpose if you were only honoring them because you thought they were an angel. That's actually the moral of the story, that you are to honor the person, the yatim, the orphan, the one that's in need. And remember your own vulnerability and you never know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has in front of you at that moment.